Right, this is Dylan Heavy Player playing some more five color Death Shadow. Uh, three two to our first league, so let's play our second league. I'm gonna take my puppy out probably after match two. So there's gonna be a little bit of a delay in the video. I'm gonna leave the recording on, but it might be something like 20 minutes or so late. Uh, with like a little bit in between. So I just don't want to upload, like break the league up into two different videos. So I'll just like maybe put a, a timestamp of when the next match starts. Something like that. Okay. Um, this hand's not very good. I'm going to ship this. And this hand's pretty good. And there's our second land. Nope. Should we grab some water while I was up? So how's the chat doing today? Welcome to the chat life. Welcome to the chat life. Noble Hierarch. That thing's dead. So I'm going to fetch before I cycle all my street rates because I'm guaranteed to use my mana. And my life total isn't going to be at super peril. I guess we can save that one. I don't need to go too low. I don't think it's worth playing a turn one shadow when I can kill a noble hierarch. Film work. Hey, Dad. Thanks for feeding me, Dad. Right here below is the the epic and amazing Philly Dog. Here, if you subscribe to the channel, you get to use the super sweet Philly Dog emote. All right, so let's cycle this first. And I'm going to play Grim Flare. Because, like, more than likely, each one of my creatures gets brick walled by a Knight of the Relic Warrior next turn. And if my opponent doesn't play a Knight of the Relic Warrior, then Grim Flare is going to let me play the most, like, to sift through and help me out more. Obviously, my opponent can company me here, and I would be in a lot of trouble, but. It appears I'm not getting company. Scavenging use is also bad. Scavenging use could arguably be worse than a company, depending on what the company hits. Looking for another fatal push. I believe I've got four in the deck. Tail. Play this goif. And then just sad, shame, shamefully pass the turn. <coughs> Yo, another reason why I played I played Jund I put a, a little bit earlier, and I hated the fact that Jund played Lightning Bolt, and I just had no I had only had like very few good ways to deal with like a large scavenging ooze in the late game. Like every single time I lost, it was to just some big old dumb scavenging ooze. All right, we're kind of flooding out a little bit, but that sometimes happens. This is a matchup that relies a lot on like Death Shadow Battle Rage. Like they can't like this a deck like this. There's a whole subset of decks in Modern that are these like early creature decks that just cannot beat Battle Rage, and like we need to draw it. You know, and it, we've got to have it in our opening hand. It's it's or not our opening hand, but it's got we need to have an out to be able to battle rage after to set up a battle rage essentially smokier matthias 01 i don't recognize the name i'll leave this fetch land around there's no need to do any more damage to myself and like we might draw something later in the game that's gonna want that would we would want to use this on. Alright, let me uh, kill target 
Birds of Paradise. Yeah, this is a spell caller. We're, we're, we're just good here. Collect a company. Company into a spell queller. Company into a noble. Company into an eternal witness. I shall probably vomit. Yeah, we're good. We're not beating this board. Okay. So, cards we want. The Brutalities come in. The Last Hope and the Radiant Flames come in. Cards that I like cutting. I like cutting Inquisitions because Brutality is often a better removal spell. Um, I like cutting some Street Wraiths against this deck. Um, on the draw, I'll bring my Street Wraiths back in and probably cut these Lilianas because I like to break serve a little bit on the draw. How's the chat's day going? What are you guys up to? You guys at work? What are you What are you doing? I was thinking about streaming some Black Red Hollow One, but after starting the second league here, that's probably not going to happen. There will be more than likely no stream this weekend from me, as it's Easter, so that's why I tried to get in at least one more here. I'm excited to upload this to YouTube and then hear my audio and listen to how my audio sounds. All right, we'll keep this. We have many answers to scavenge games. Though a hand like this might have to take a turn one bird so that we don't fall too far behind. Like we might end up taking like a turn one bird here and then double traversing on turn two just to make sure that we can cast this Liliana. Opponent did mulligan. I think I'm going to take the bird just to slow them down. And if my opponent plays the scavenging you plays the selfless spirit, then I'll just abrupt decay it and then eat it fuse. Just want to slow them down a little bit, have them play off curve. Best case scenario, we hit a land. So now we're just gonna double traverse. Traverse, get forest, play forest. Traverse, get swamp. Hold Swamp. And then I'm casting Liliana. I'm actually going to Edict whatever my opponent plays next turn. Just because having the Planeswalker in play for longer, it means it's going to do, it's just going to be do more, it's going to be more effective. So Windswept Heath right here. Is, is that what this one was? That was an old art. Okay. I'm guaranteed 100% doing this. So I'm going to Edict, and then I'm going to Bobble on my opponent's turn. I don't think there's any discard running around my opponent's deck, but I might as well not play into it if there is. Just give them information on one less card, and it's not like I'm doing anything with the card anyways. Like I'm literally not taking any game action next, next hand. Could leave that bobble around and maybe push a three drop. That collecting company is going to be tough. So hopefully we can hit a brutality or a thought seize very soon. Or at least get Death Shadow down into play. Here's the Scoos. We knew the Scoos was coming. Draw two cards. All right, that's pretty great. Um... So I can actually go, I can do everything. I have to discard my Battle Rage, though. Is it worth discarding the Battle Rage? Let's see. Let's go Thoughtseize first. See what my opponent's hand looks like. 
Night of the Reliquary, Company, Path to Exile. So I can take Path, go up, ditch the Battle Rage. But I just got to take this Company. Like, the Company is what's going to get me. I'm going to ditch this Battle Rage. Hopefully they ditch Path. They did. And then when my opponent cracks the fetch, I'm just going to abrupt decay this. And that'll keep, I guess we won't keep Delirium intact because I only have three types. I'm going to fetch land off of Delirium. It's not going to give my opponent the option to eat anything. Like they could eat my bobble and then give me two types off. Now with this Liliana going to the graveyard, we're going to have Delirium, which is good. It's a it's a deck goal. Pass the turn over. So they don't have a good relevance, a second relevance spell. But they can't. It's not like they can double spell this turn anyways. Okay, so they are gonna try to keep their knight in play. That's a good. That's a good draw. It does check the knight. Like it's larger than the knight for now. I am gonna have to figure out an answer to it though. And now my opponent can either eat the Liliana or they can eat the Bobble to get me off of Delirium. It's a good eat from them. I have less. They, they probably can assume that I have less Planeswalkers than um, I have less Walkers than whatever they are called. Uh, I can't think. I would rather hit the knight. I, I, I know that. I mean, I knew that I could have done that. I'd rather get the scavengers off the table there. Um, John So. I might not have articulated it very well, but that, that was what I was going for there. So now we're going to attack with this Goyf. Tick up here. So I'm probably just going to chump block this knight with this death shadow as I'll be able to rebuy it. Now I don't really want to. So we're looking for like a battle rage would be very good. Okay. So this knight gets large. We block here. Now we just kind of hold put. And then if my opponent goes and gets like a Kessig Wolf run to try to break through here, they still need a green source. They still need a red source. So I think my worst play would be go down. I'm going to go up here, play this Shadow and pass. We're in like a little bit of a holding pattern, but this Liliana has some inevitability with what we're trying to do. Yeah, I mean, I chose to leave to or get rid of the Scavenging Ooze because Scavenging Ooze often does more damage than a card like Knight of the Reliquary does against this deck. Oftentimes, my Death Shadows, well, not now, but my Death Shadows do usually get larger than these uh, these Knights. And I want, um, I want to make sure that I get rid of... I don't know how to exactly say this. I want to make sure that I get rid of Scavenging Use because Scavenging Use is something that cuts off later draws, such as Tarmogoyf, Traverse. So while both cards are bad, I easily could, if like if they draw a one drop next turn, or if they draw, oh, Bajoku Bog. So that's going to make the game. 
a little bit harder for us. So now I get a little, a good old little death, a little tongue voice now. Probably just chomp, work it again. So my opponent is at least two turns away from being able to get at this Liliana unless they draw, unless they like knight for wolf run and draw a fetch land. If they knight for wolf run and draw a fetch land, then things could get a little difficult. And now our death shadows and our tarmogoyfs are going to be actually larger and just eat this knight. And that's why we let the knight go. We didn't let the scavenging ooze go because scavenging ooze will like mess up our game plan a lot more than knight will. Because Scavengers takes away Delirium. They did hit the Bajoku Bog, which, you know, in hindsight does kind of invalidate that a little bit. But having these two, or having the Scavenging who's gone and making so they're not gaining life means that this Knight of the Reliquary can't really attack because it has to block. And we're just going to hide behind this Liliana the Last Hope. I'm starting to think that they don't have Kessie Wolf in their deck. Because they obviously, I mean, would have, they would have got it. Maybe they're just straight bant. If my opponent attacks, I'm just going to throw both shadows in and the Tarmogoyf. Let me do this first before I block. Let me just, you know, make sure we have a shock land. Yeah, we do. Should have got the Godless Shrine just to give him something to think about for game three. Okay, so he gets, gets both my shadows. I'll hit this. And that should be the game. Game should be just about over. I could have rebought the shadow and then played the shadow, but that is a little bit. There, there are ways that that goes wrong. Like my opponent has like an insane company hit. This Liliana is going to be an insane company hit. This ultimate is going to be anything my opponent presents. More than likely. So now that we're on the play, I don't want these Liliana the Veils. And I want more one mana interaction. Just to be able to make sure we can get underneath our opponent and... Probably want one more street. No, I want I want to make sure that I've got the one mana interaction so that I can deal with the scavenging ooze before it hits the battlefield. Scavenging ooze just mops these games up so well that if you don't mind it, scavenging ooze is going to beat you. All right, this hand is a no good. This hand's great. Okay. So we're going to draw that and then, what is going on here? Tweaking out. Draw that, then bobble and see what we want to do. Remember, I can always wait until my opponent's upkeep to push their creature. So I can, if I like the card off bobble, I can draw it. We don't want that one. So now we get Overgrown Tomb. I'm just going to hit this now for that sweet F6 value. There's nothing that we could draw there that would make us not want to push this. Even that, like I don't want to get an early night down that can outgrow Radiant Flames. Even a Scavenging Ooze is a problem. So now I've got decision time because 
if I just let this Noble Hierarch go, it could mean a turn three company. And my hand can beat some cards off this turn three company. So I think I'm going to let it go and then terminate something if I have to. Like I might try to terminate this Noble Hierarch on their end step. Which is like a potentially weak play, so we might not do it, but... It's going to pave the way to get Death Shadow down next turn if our opponent doesn't give us a reason here. This is unfortunate because we can't... I can't really push Terminate... I can't Terminate this because that leaves me pretty naked to a Knight of the Reliquary. So I'm just going to fetch and then get my Shadow into play next turn and then hold up the Terminate again. The Terminate's there for like a very select set of creatures. Jeez, we need to not do that anymore. Um, I'm going to leave this for Revolt in case we draw a Fatal Push. Okay, get this into play. Okay, so here comes company. And I could have set this up so that I could have Radiant Flames on my turn. The problem is if they hit two, two knights or something like that, then I'm just like dead in the water. If they hit something like a spell crawler, like what would be worse is spell crawler plus self of spirit. Okay, and this is fine. I'm just gonna hit this spell crawler on my turn because I want my shadow in play. Again, we can wait on the Radiant Flames, but the Radiant Flames is more than likely going to be very good next turn. And if the Radiant Flames comes, like if they spell color my Radiant Flames, then it doesn't do anything for the rest of the game because of how the Converge works. Because I didn't spend any colors to pay it. So what we're hoping here is that my opponent taps out for something kind of small. Yep, Tireless Tracker is small. Unless they have, yeah, they still can't double fetch land. So we're hoping for something like Something like a Scavenging Ooze. Scavenging Ooze would be very, very good here. Just another creature. Commit something else to the board. Okay, so that's not what we wanted to see commit to the, committed to the board. Okay. So now I can attack with this Death Shadow and set up something next turn while threatening, while also progressing my board to a place where Teamer Battle Rage. It's going to be a very good draw. So one, two, five, seven, I go to nine. Okay, so we're not going to die next turn even if they have a removal spell for this. When I get a God to the Shrine, I don't think it's going to matter, but it could give my opponent something to think about. And this Tarmogoyf also threatens to just trade with this Tireless Tracker unless my opponent's entire next turn is like crack, play, land, crack one, two, three, four, five, six, play, crack three clues. Then this Tireless Tracker is going to become an issue. Okay, that is a big night. This game is slowly getting away from us. Like right now I have two pretty must kill permanents on my opponent's side of the board. So things things are getting a little hairy. Okay, that doesn't deal with either of them. They're drawing an EE. -E. Oh my gosh. So I have to leave both my creatures back to block because 
If I attack with one, it's not, it wouldn't even work if I attacked, but yeah, that engineer explosives is no good. If they have a path to exile here, then we're just dead. A lot of ways this goes bad. Yeah, that more than likely just kills me. If my opponent does it right. We'll take a draw step. E for two. Crack a clue. They, don't even, they can just E for two and pop it. Well, they're cracking a clue first. Okay. What? Did my opponent just had the game? Because they drew the explosives. Oh, okay. So now, still have that EE problem. So I have to answer the EE, both the creatures on board, and a voice. So like, these two creatures are lethal. Yeah, I just don't have, is the EE even there? Like, did they shuffle it away? Did I miss something? But either way, I'm still dead, right? So if I block this here, I could just Radiant Flames, but then this voice token comes back, and that also kills me. Block here. Gain two life. Hit this. Take six. Yep, we're just dead. That was unfortunate. But it was a good, good match. Good match. Well, sometimes that's just how the cookie crumbles. We just can flood out a little bit. We got pathed once. That path exile was brutal. I wonder what my opponent, I guess my opponent was playing around a removal spell, but even still, they had a removal spell B with the engineered explosives. Because, yeah, Self of Spirit was rough. Um, they had, they had a, uh, they had the engineered explosive, they had me dead, right? Even through a removal spell. Oh, my opponent's nice. Yeah, I thoroughly agree, disagree with that, John, also. I think you have to kill the mana dorks in order to slow down their progression. They had a they had a draw that lined up with ours, and we didn't get it. But I think you need to kill mana dorks when you're presented the option to kill mana dorks, especially considering I had another removal spell in my hand. It wasn't like I was playing against devoted druid, and it was my only one. That's a different story. But there is a testament to why bolt the bird is a part of Magic the Gathering. So they went bottom top. I would assume we're playing against Storm. Here. Yes, well I can beat them if they reach four mana on turn four. And I have, you know, a, a draw that comes together. I can handle that. More than likely that's gonna be much more difficult to handle. That Tarma Wife was a very good draw. On turn, um, how do I say this, on turn three. On turn three, when it, anything ahead of schedule is going to be tough. On turn two, now the Reliquary is very tough. Um, so they went top. I would assume with a hand like this, they would have kept a cost reducer, another cantrip, or a gift and given on top. They wouldn't keep a ritual because they need to keep going. So I'm just going to keep their dig. You're just killing us and we drop the dorks anyways. Soon enough. And then like and in a perfect world we draw battle rage. Like I mean you're speaking to like that invalidates those chump blocks. I think we just need to slow the opponent down, set up a stable board, then be able to battle rage our way out of it. So we're gonna get Goyf down. 
Power Wife is a wee, he's a very wee lad. I should have gotten a red source there. Should have probably just gotten a stomping ground. It's not really going to matter in like, because we have another land, but it just would have been better sequencing to do it like that. I'm going to grab some water. I'll be right back. Okay, so they just play a land and pass, it looked like. We are back to my upkeep. Um, we're going to get in there and attack. Because I play the Shivan Reef. Okay. And then we're just going to go do dude. Lead off with... I think I'm just going to play Guy Guy. I don't think... If they go... Like they easily could kill me if they go Ritual into Gifts. But I think that they... I think with how their hand is set up, I can split the piles to give them a low enough base to where I can play... I can at least get my chance to untap. But with how this game is like lining up here, I need to get the pressure on the board here because they're still at 18 and they're untapping on their fourth turn. Yeah, I mean, I understand what you're saying there, and I might might play that if I had a uh, if I had a battle rage. So they are going to go for this, and this is a line that we could be in quite a bit of trouble to. But it's going to be difficult for them to split this pile in such a way where they only have one mana to go off and three cards. I've certainly played like that, John. So when I've had a battle rage rolled up. Like, when I've had battle rage rolled up, it's been, it's been a little different. Okay, so we're just going to toss both of these in the graveyard, let them stone rain themselves, let them, uh, you know, deny themselves a draw step with this Noxious Revival, and then get the Decay back. Because I don't think there's any other cards here that they're going to look to get back besides a cost reducer. And again, they've got such a low base that... It's just going to be difficult for them to come back from that. It's going to be difficult for them to come to go off from that. So now they're going to stone rain, or not stone rain themselves, but they're going to like not get a draw step and cost themselves two life to play. No, okay, they're not going to. So I know they've got past and flames, not just survival. It's been a rough stream. There's been a rough stream on the old record lately, or to just today. I did a little practice run with this deck beforehand and did well in a league. But I guess we went 3 2 in the last league, which, like, it's modern, so, like, all the decks feel like 3-2 decks. Because everything is just... There's nothing in Modern that is a great deal better than anything else. Like, everything is... There's a lot of parity across the format. So now we're just attacking. I, we're attacking for 10 here. So we can Battle Rage them out next turn. As long as we don't die. They play turn two, you play turn two life, and then play a big knight. You can never attack again. If you just think through the lines, it's really attack for sure versus use them, or it's a matter of not being able to answer the must handle creatures. I find that they have enough must handle creatures that you have to like I I, I understand what you're saying, John So, but um they have enough must handle creatures between scavenging ooze, uh selfless spirit as we saw there, and Knight of the Reliquary and eternal witnesses to get them back and then they can hit them off collected companies that i think that you have to slow their mana down in order to make it so they can't start doing that ahead of schedule 
Because in a theoretically, when your draw lines up, you can handle that deck as long as you're ahead of schedule. As long as they're not ahead of schedule. If you're each one of you are playing on a turn for turn basis, okay. So here we go. Here comes Baral. So they don't hit a land drop here. We should be good because we'll just deal with the Baral in response to the first spell, and they don't have a land to remand it. And so they, they don't have the Revival anymore. They have Past in Flames as the last card that I know. Okay. So we're going to board out some removal here as some of the decks cut quite a bit of their cost reducers. So like we'll probably take these out here. But I'll leave in the Abrupt Decays because um, <coughs> because the Abrupt Decays can hit Pyromancer's Ascension as well, which some of them have moved to start playing. We'll bring in the Extractions, bring in the Radiant Flames here. So that's six cards, five cards. I can either cut something like a Liliana, as it's a little slow in the draw, or I could cut a Traverse. And I think I like taking out a Traverse because you're only really going to need one or two threats to win the game. You don't need to go long and have redundant copies of them. I think I actually I actually enjoy I enjoy playing against Storm. There's some frustration when it comes to Storm because like I think I, I recorded a challenge I think about a month ago and I discard spelled the Storm opponent on one and two and they killed me on turn three. And like that was pretty frustrating, but besides that, I I, I find the gameplay like the, there's a lot of good decisions with the, some of, like some of the gift piles you're just dead. Like if they gifts with the cost reducer in play, most of the time you're just dead. But I do think that Storm has a lot of interesting gameplay, so I think I'm 100% here to fetch. I'm gonna bobble my opponent here. I have not played with Surgical Extraction very much in this deck, so like I've got to get like, what what is good to Surgical and what is not good to Surgical. We'll start out with this, because I wouldn't mind hitting a Reducer. Okay, so I think a hand like this... So this is where we just take a Pyromancer's Ascension, and then we Surgical the Ascension. The question is, do we let them draw a land, or do we let them draw a random card? Because now, if we cut this land off, then they're going to be opting in sleight of handing forward lands. So I think we hit this in their upkeep, because we know what's coming. Most of the time, you're supposed to surgical inside of the draw step, but I would rather actually just deny my opponent the mana. We'll see what we draw. Like, if I hit an Abrupt Decay here, I might think about it, but... Yeah, we're just going to take this. And again, this is so they don't draw the Spire Bluff Canal to just kind of harass their mana a little bit. Let's get that one. And then let's take this one, and then let's get a picture... Nope, that's not it. Right here. New. Okay. There we go. So what do they got? They've got... They have no cost reducers. They've got two Empty the Warrens, two Grape Shot, two Past in Flames. Okay. That's usually one more than they have. They have Shattering Spree, so they're we're getting a little bit of value off this. They're thinking about Graph Digger's Cage. Okay, so they have four wing cons left in their deck, and they've got no gifts besides the gifts in their hand, which we'll take next turn. Okay. And then we get this out of their hand, and we're good. So if we hit a land next turn, we should be in very good shape. Slide a hand. 
There's the steam vents. Okay, so that's an opt they're holding up for. Tilt. Okay, so this is going to be a fetch shock blood crypt into thought seas. I'm going to use I'm going to use polluted delta as it's a worse fetch land than wooded foothills with how our decks configured after sideboard. It doesn't hit every land, doesn't hit forest or stomping ground. And we don't need Godless Shrine. So the fact that um, Wooded Foothills doesn't hit Godless Shrine is kind of irrelevant. I guess I shouldn't have. I could have easily just like not fetched there and like lost out on a point. Okay, so this is just a piece of the puzzle. They're going to opt. So they're still two turns away. We put a card on the bottom. So now i got to think about whether I want to... Thought Seize or play Grim Flare, and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get Grim Flare into play. I think there's one other card that I knew. Yeah, so now we're gonna go Thought Seize, take their gifts. If they gifts in response here, we should be able to maneuver a pile here. Yes, that's what they're gonna do. Okay, so this is like gonna be a value gifts, I would assume. It's gonna be something like Piece of the Puzzle. Serum Visions, Manamorphose, Sleight of Hand. That's what I would take if I were them. I'm definitely not giving them Piece of the Puzzle or Manamorphose. I'll give them two cantrips. And then I get to take a card. They might get past Light. So I'm going to go Manamorphose, Past in Flames. Pieces of the puzzle, Serum Visions. They just got lands. Well, don't I don't I look like a look like a winner here? Um guess just take give them the two blue lands. That seems very odd. Yeah, that just seems like a very that seems like a misplay from my opponent. Like you easily could have figured something out there. I think that that's the lands they had. I don't quite remember. But you easily could have set something up there where you get some sort of value. Like this game looks like it's kind of going to go long because I don't have any pressure on the table. I would have much rather seen my opponent get past in flames, pieces of the puzzle, another gifts I'm given, and then like serum visions. Something like that. Because now they're just not doing anything. Manamorphos will help them do something. They're just grape shot in me. And that's what I'm talking about. If they would have had a base set up, that would have done so much more. I don't think I could have I actually like legitimately don't think I could have beaten that that gifts pile that I stated out. And said now they're likely just dead. Five, eight, twelve. None of these cards matter. I guess I'll just take the Brutality. Just hope we don't F6 through our Shadow Casting. Yeah, none of these cards matter. <sighs> so they must have drawn like an Umstantiate. And we're just going to attack. Because I don't want to go Collective Brutality, have them bring back my Grim Flare, then find a way to bounce this again, and I don't have Lethal next turn. Now I still have, like, no matter which creature they bounce, I'm still going to have Lethal on the board. Unsub. Okay. I'm fairly certain that I know what my opponent's last card is. I just haven't been taking care of it. Yeah, I mean, I guess we'll just ditch both of these, take the Battle Rage... And I might as well now just go, like, Escalate with two modes, minus two, minus two, gain and drain, just to give myself, oh, no, a discard spell, and then gain and drain, just to give myself a little bit more of a cushion. Did 
Ditches Radiant Flames. Yeah, we knew about that. And now they have to, like, I don't know, they'd have to, like, metamorphose into a million times to kill me. And again, the way this game played out, I don't think my opponent would have been able to beat, I would have been able to beat, like, a, a, a good gifts pile there. I was just, like, a little too slow. Which shows you how powerful this Storm deck is. The fact that I, like, two for, I didn't two for one them, but I traded, I got the two Pyromancers Ascensions out of their hand. Um, got two Pyromancers Ascensions out of their hand and, like, was stripping their resources, and I think that they still had a draw that won the game. I think that Storm's just, like, by far the best sort of linear deck, if that's where you want to be in Modern. Then I think you should be playing Storm. This hand's, like, pretty medium, but I think I'm going to keep it because I'm going to play a removal spell and a removal spell. Like, we want to see something like a Noble Hierarch deck here. Definitely want to see a Noble Hierarch deck. Don't want to see, like, a combo piece or something like that. A fair deck would be nice. Something like a Jund or an Abzan. No, Abzan's never good for this deck. Okay. That's, like, not terrible. Whoa. So I think I'm just going to smoke that next turn. Because I can't beat these, like, Eldrazi and Taxis decks if they're, like, working. If they're creatures, because their creatures just suck. And if they're playing at instant speed, I can beat that. But I can't beat this, these decks if they start playing. If they're playing at sorcery speed, excuse me. I can beat that. But if they start playing at, like, instant speed, then I'm just, I'm dead in the water. Because then they can, like, play their Displacer and have a bunch of mana up. <laughs> Yeah, I would say that's exactly what we're playing against there, Tin Man. Yeah. So Athalia would be annoying. and oh, But here comes a Colorless Eldrazi spell. Okay, that's fine. So now we're going to start. Now our Liliana's just going to start working him here. This old girl on the play is just so mean. Card is hot garbage in a lot of matchups on the draw. We're gonna like we're at a little bit of a perilous life total, but we've got a bunch of removal spells. And the last thing that we want to do is start fetching basics against the ghost quarter path to exile slash field of ruin deck. I was gonna guess red green Eldrazi for some reason before they showed any cards. Red green Eldrazi is a another good is another good deck. So this is kind of like the nightmare scenario. My opponent not, doesn't really have any good takes. Because, like, it terminates the right take. So I can ditch my Thoughtseize. I don't want to ditch any of my cards. I want to keep all of them, so I'm just going to play this Liliana. Though, potentially the Thought Seize. So is the Thought Seize better than a random card from my opponent? Or, I can actually go Thought Seize, Tick Up, Ditch Liliana, Traverse for a Death Shadow. Yeah, I kind of like that. So let's go Thought Seize. Okay, another Thought Not Seer. That's going to be kind of annoying. So we're going to take this path, tick up, I guess it doesn't really matter, I'm losing one of these cards. They're ditching their shambling vent more than likely.
So this line of play didn't work out. I guess it still kind of worked out because now I still have the biggest creature in play. But like this definitely did go a little bit sideways because of how my opponent's hand was set up. We're just hoping to rip something good off of this um, off this dot not seer hit here. He takes this veil. So I'm out of veils. Play shamble boy. Shamble, shamble. That's gas. Because now we draw two cards. Mama. And we drew a shadow. Man. We got some smoke coming off the top of the library here. So we're kind of worried about... I guess we're not even worried about, like... I don't know. I don't think my opponent... My, we're worried about Mirror and Crusader. Mirror and Crusader gives my opponent an actual chance to win this game. But that's kind of it. Eldrazi Displacer doesn't really do it. Reality Smasher doesn't do it. And that's why I just really... I really dislike these these ether vial decks in modern because you're just your deck is so much worse if you don't have an ether vial and humans is the best deck in the format so like they're going to have like the ether vial hate is going to be ready people know about it people know how to work around ether vial like this whole deck is i think it's just very i think it's very underpowered and like you don't i guess and this is partially i guess because death shadow is on the down tick a little bit I don't want Fulminator Mages in this matchup, I don't think. I actually don't even really know what I want. Like, maybe Lingering Souls, but, like, if they Ghost Quarter my White Source, then I'm just not playing Magic anymore with those cards. I think all my cards are pretty good. I kind of want this to be able to pick off his larger creatures. When in doubt, just cut a Street Wraith. I could, there's an argument for Fulminator Mage on the play. But I think we're just gonna I think we're just gonna run this back here. I, I might bring in lingering souls if I see a lot of the ra radiant flames is good. Wait, radiant flames helps clean up blade splicer. So actually, I'm gonna cut these Liliana the veils on the draw because if they have like a Thalia or a blade splicer draw, they don't do anything. Okay, so like this. Um, and also like the big I think I think that the Death Shadow decks kind of invalidate the Eldrazi decks because the pull to playing an Eldrazi deck is like... Um, give me one second. Let me finish my thought. The, the, pull, the, the, the pull to playing an Eldrazi deck is that you want to play undersized creatures that are disruptive, but you could just play Tarmogoyf, Death Shadow, Gurmag Angler that are even more undercosted, more lost, more and larger, and you're deck is just as disruptive. I'm going to ship this hand. This hand, like, absolutely gets murked by a rest in peace. And I don't have any removal. This hand, like, kind of is better. It doesn't get loose to a rest in peace. I think, unfortunately, I've got to put this on the bottom, though. I need to find lands. Like, this Eldrazi deck just doesn't do any single thing very impressive. So I'm going to fetch cycle before fetching because we want lands. Uh, that's a pretty good draw. So two good rips off the top. So we're looking to take like a Thalia here. Because if they play a Leon and Arbor, I can just push it, fetch, and then Inquisition again. Yeah, so I'm just going to take this Flicker Wisp. They'll play the Arbiter. I will then push the Arbiter. Fetch Thoughtseize the Gaunti. Then my opponent and I are both... My opponent's not doing anything anymore. And then we're going to hopefully play our last hope on next turn. Nice thing about these. These Shadow Leagues are quick. Like, we've only been up for 2 hours and 17 minutes, and we're already nearly done our... We're nearly done our third match. Okay, so that's a little unfortunate, but...
but I do have to take this Leon and Arbor. Because we can play through this Gaunti if I get this last hope down. This last hope's just gonna trump this Gaunti. And we do have two basics. So now I'm just gonna get stopping ground. The he could he could murk us off both of our red sources. So maybe I actually want to protect my red source. Which I'm going to do. Protect my second red source. Like I'd much rather keep it in the deck, especially when we have access to traverse. We've got access to more fetch lands. I can even roll this Liliana back if I need to. I'd rather really just not expose it. Don't be a reality smasher. Did they have two ghost quarters or did one of their ghost quarters get taken? One of their ghost quarters must have been this. So there's the Gaunti. I must have just not been paying attention. Face down card. Well, now we're just going to cast it. I hate casting these converge cards. Red, black, green. We're just going to get this off the table. Though that was stupid. I guess it wasn't stupid if my opponent lands like a Thalia, which they easily could. But it's it's. But then I can deal. Yeah, it was just stupid. I wasn't thinking there. That was a poor play. I should have just waited, ticked up on it. I could have pushed whatever my opponent did to supplement the board if I needed to. And then if not, I could have just Radiant Flames in the next turn. I just thought to myself, I want to use the... I guess, no, no, that wasn't stupid because they could easily Ghost Quarter me off of my Red Source, so I should use it while I've got it. So that was not stupid. It was stupid at first glance. My counter glance determined it was not stupid. Mm-hmm. So this gives me Revolt. Okay. <clears throat> so now we're in trouble. Now I need a fetch land or a traverse. So this Mirror and Crusader is going to put me to one. So I kind of actually need to hit it right now. So I'm going to roll this down. Because so I need to hit a Death Shadow. Or now I need to hit an exact... And I need to hit exactly Stomping Ground or Traverse with this. And we didn't do it. So let's see what they've got here just so I can get a little information on the way out. And then we will scoop it up. Thanks for the second stream. Just as good as the last one. Top five. Thanks. You know, have nice past holidays. We call in Sweden. Thank you very much for the kind words. I appreciate that. I hope you have a good holiday, sir. So now on the play, I want these veils back in the deck. Especially now that I saw Mirror and Crusader. And Um, I don't know exactly what else I want to cut. I probably can just, I actually honestly can probably just shave on street raids. No, they're actually going to bring in some graveyard hate, so I'm actually going to cut two traverses. Well, that's good there, Hog City, Utah. Okay, um, it's a little land heavy. 
We have one, two, we're three quarters of the way to Lyrium, but we only have two traverses in the deck. I think I'm going to ship this. I think we can do much better here on the play. What would you cut for it, Johnny? Sounds great. That, that card is great. One of the hard parts about playing Death Shadow is that you need to, like, keep a fundamental, like, um, you need to keep together, like, a certain uh, core of the deck in order for, like, just operating reasons. So it is a little difficult to sideboard sometimes. Like, you have all these cards you want to bring in, but you need to keep, like, a critical mass of, like, the cards that make the, the wheels go. Okay. This is a pretty dynamite hand. We're going to have to... So how do I set up... My Liliana's going to have to do some serious work to win this one. Here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is a stacked hand for my opponent. I'm going to need a body. I need a body quickly. I think I've got to take a Tide Hollow Sculler and then plan to deal with the next second Tide Hollow Sculler and then try to slog through these Blade Splicers. Because alternatively, if I take like Thalia, I think I'm just going to take Tide Hollow Sculler. This is tough. This is a very good hand. For my opponent. More than likely here comes Thalia. Okay. That's actually not a terrible play. Because. Of. Um, because it protects Tide Hollow Scholar more. So now I just pass, see what my opponent does. If they take, if they Tide Hollow Scholar me, I want to be able to free the card immediately. So I'm going to take a shot from this. If they just jam Blade Splicer, then we have like another, a whole nother issue. So how do I win? I think it starts with terminating this, untapping, and then hitting this with Liliana. I really wanted to not act there because if they played a Tide Hollow Scholar, then I couldn't free my card they took. So that's why I just took a shot from that Thalia. That's actually a very good draw. So that snipes this. We then push that. And then slog through the next blade splicer. Yeah, so we're just going to push this. We're not going to take any damage from this. They're just going right at me. Okay. This makes it... Liliana makes it so this thing trades one for one, which is good. But we're so far behind in resources. I need something, like, on the battlefield that can apply a decent amount of pressure. Gideon, ally of Zendikar. Jesus. So now I need a Death Shadow, quick.
the ally of motherfucking Zendikar. All right, I'm just gonna cycle this. Yeah. Whew. Big Gids, Big Gids got me there. I could have taken a different line, but I don't really think I could have just not like abrupt decay, then like played out one more turn. But I think that I wanted to be able to get Death Shadow down because if I found Death Shadow and got it, I could easily cheese that game with a team of Battle Rage. Whew. That was a tough one. I'm much more inclined to think that Lingering Souls is probably good in that matchup with how they sideboarded. But the problem is if you just play if you play Lingering Souls and they play if you have that Lingering Souls in your deck and they play Thalia and the card's just like absolutely embarrassing. Yeah, big I love I love Gideon. My two best ever tournament city tournament uh finishes are because of big gids. I played four in my green white aggro deck, and I played two in my modern deck. Um, it's okay. I'd like a discard spell, but it is what it is. I love how I gave that deck so much flack, and then it just like mollywopped me. Uh, don't be Arbor Elf. All right, that's that's okay. Um, that that is funny. So I'm 100% pushing this thing no matter what, but I might wait until their upkeep to do it. And then I'm probably going to get down Tarmogoyf, because Tarmogoyf is going to be one, two. We have an Inquisition on top of my deck. I don't know when I'm going to have time to cast this Inquisition. So let's cast, let's get another one of these in. I'm going to fetch Basic Swamp. Might as well bobble the top card of my opponent's deck first before I make any information, make any decision. Just get all the information that is available to me, which is something that you should always do before making any decisions. So they're drawing a land. Then I'm going to get a swamp, pass, smoke this in their upkeep after I draw. There's virtually nothing I could draw that would, like, change that, but... Oh, yeah, we're, we're on it there, Bubba Watson. And that's our second basic, which is gas. Something that's like not under that's like you know a little underrated in this matchup is that like P and like mom and pop is a really hard card to beat. And this Grim Flare gives you a lot of percentage points against mom and pop. Okay, so I think it's more important for me to get a basic swamp here than to cut myself off of casting Liliana. Now I easily so I can play in the Lightning Bolt here and play Grim Flare because if I don't draw another land, I can do something like go Grim Flare and Tarmogoyf because of how my mana is. So I basically can play Flare and have a better turn next turn at the cost of two damage by getting a trigger in. It's actually not even going to be at the cost of... It's going to be at the cost of one damage because I'm going to Inquisition with this line. Mom and Pop are tough to deal with. This is like much worse to lightning bolt. So if my opponent does bolt my Grim Flare, like I'm gonna feel kind of sad here. But which is which is what happened. But it did set me up to have a more productive turn next turn if they didn't have a lightning bolt. And it turns out that really nothing would have changed. This Grim Flare would have just got bolted. So we have Chandra Chandra. Okay. The old Inferno Titano. So they, the Windswept Heath's gone. So next time their Chandra goes up to five, so our Tarmogoy still checks it, which is good. 
this is like the three color good stuff deck that has a good matchup against this Ponza deck. I'm assuming that mine is worse right here because we're not playing white or not playing blue. So without stubborn denial, it can be a little more difficult. You can't really play the Chandra here. You can't really play the Chandra until you have another relevant thing to do with the mana because the Tarmogoyf just eats the Chandra. Basically, you're trading four mana and two damage for one of my combat phases, which is five damage. What is this? Stone Lane. All right, you got it. My boy Shadow, which will, which is not ready to be cast. So the nice thing about how this game is shaping up is that if this game gets over quickly, then I'm going to win. If this game goes long, then this Death Shadow will actually, like, tango with this Inferno Titan. And we have a Terminate already rolled up. How we lose this game is if my opponent just blows all my lands up and I can't cast anything. All right, Molten Rain gets us a little closer to Shadow. Oh, no, it's not because it's not a... Molten Rain's only if there's instants or sorceries. And it's a good... Like, again, my opponent's not doing anything. They are progressing. Like, they're just... They're messing with me, but they're simultaneously dying while doing it. And my opponent still doesn't have a draw. My opponent actually is dead, I think. I think they're actually... Because, like... What they need to do basically is they need to draw a Bloodbright Elf or they need to draw a blocker for their Chandra. Or they're gonna lose. Because they just go runner runner with lands. If they went if they drew a land here, then they had game. Okay, so there's a blocker for their Chandra. Which is important. Yes, mom and pop, yeah, that's what I was talking about with a, with a blocker. But even mom and pop doesn't get there through battle range. If we draw a way to get it through here. Battle Rage is usually just like an instant win no matter what. So now we could be in a little bit of a hard spot if we don't draw a land next turn. Because my opponent just takes this. They play Chandra. They do whatever with Chandra. Chump my Tarmogoyf. <coughs> and then next turn, they make mana to play Inferno Titan. And Inferno Titan is, is good on this board as long as I don't draw a land, a red land. So I can't draw like Overgrown Tomb. So now they just go Chandra, make mana, crack a clue, and pass. They shouldn't do damage to me. Yep. They got it. So they can attack if they hit an Arbor Elf. So now we just want to land. All right, now this game is going to get hard. We have like one more draw step at a land. So now we actually might just be dead because my opponent comes down with their Inferno Titan, shoots my Tarmogoyf, negs this. So then now I need to draw like... I need to draw a land in order to get my Death Shadow into play and make it so that they can't they have to plus. Like if they draw if they draw a basic land on their own, I'm in trouble. They got a block. And there's no sense attacking the Chandra, because then they just take it. The Chandra just Oh, that was stupid. Well no, it wasn't. It's it's the same thing no matter what. They they basically have a forced block no matter what. This just makes it so that, let's just say they do have land six rolled up, that um, they don't have the tracker in play. So we just hope that they have to make mana with the Chandra to play Inferno Titan, which is good. That gives us more outs. So I got Blood Crypt, and that's the only red land that I have in my deck. Now, a black land, like if I find a Traverse, I can get a Death Shadow down, which plays in this spot.
man, that's rough. That's probably just the game because I have to chump block and then I'm just chumping for the rest of the game. Like they shoot me for three, shoot me for five. Then they just off the trigger, they kill me next turn. Five. I have to lose one life to play Death Shadow anyways. Yeah, that was pretty unfortunate. But what are you going to do? There it was. It's just tilting me. It's right there. It's right there. And again, we got a little bit fortunate there just to not... Um, we got a little fortunate there because had they hit a land anyways, we wouldn't have even been in a position to win that game. So I don't even really know what I want to sideboard. Like these surgicals seem kind of medium. The brutalities seem kind of medium. But I tend to just think that this 60 is okay. Yeah, I think we're just going to keep it here. None, none of these other cards are really all that stellar. And this is what happens. When you, when you cut out the blue, you're going to struggle a little bit more in these other matchups. All right, we'll keep this hand. I can go Cyclist Street Wraith, and if we hit a land, then I can Thought Seize my opponent, or Inquisition my opponent, excuse me. And if not, I can just Traverse... Um, I can actually bobble myself, and if I don't like the top card, I can traverse to shuffle my library. All right, so now we're in good shape. So now I think we're just fetching. I think we're just going. We want to get a Blood Crypt. This can, all, this can also always find me basic lands. I think I just want to get the Blood Crypt just to have it in play. Scoos. Okay, we're gonna hope to get underneath that scavenge goose as we've already got a turn one turn one uh, death shadow set up. Yeah, we're just gonna take this Arbor Elf. We can beat this as long as we get on the board. This is a game where we likely will sacrifice getting a like if we draw a fetch land in here, we're just gonna get a death shadow into play. We're not going to worry about Blood Moon. And we're just gonna hope that Battle Rage plus Tarmogoyf and Death Shadow is enough to just clock the game out here. <clears throat> like, I'm... Play in Tarmogoyf next turn, no matter what. Okay, Pluto Delta. So that means I can go Traverse for a Shadow, depending on what my next draw step is, if I would like to. My opponent's not doing anything. I can also just Traverse for a Shadow on turn two, also. Wow, they're just going to skip their turn. Don't skip your turn, dude. No, they play Wooded Foothills. Okay. Cool. Okay, great. So let me think now. Actually, now... Death Shadow is 4-4. Four, four. So it's the same damage over two turns, but one doesn't get wrecked by Lightning Bolt. So I think I like that play better. And again, we're ignoring Blood Moon because this Traverse can find us the land if we need to. I should have fetched with a different one so that I gave myself the option in the late game to fetch for, play, for basic Swamp. That was a little bit of a misplay on my part. We're just going to get this guy down. My opponent plays Scavenging Ooze. <coughs> and then we're just going to beat over the top. We should be able to go over the top of this Ooze. This Ooze is more than likely going to be too slow, I think. Because next turn we go to 8, Traverse, play a Death Shadow, crack them for 8, then we're cracking them for 12. So they drew a land. So they do have Blood Moon rolled up next turn. So we do have some decisions to do. I can put them in a position where Blood Moon is likely just, like, too slow, which is probably what I'm going to do now. So let me go attack for four. And 
And again, like I'm not fetching basic because I want to hemorrhage my life total here to get this death shadow into play. So that if my opponent takes turn three off, I actually like have a chance to just like start to abyss them. Because like now they go to 14, now they go to 15, there's eight power on board, I can do 12 damage. This, if I draw another Traverse, it can find me Street Wraiths to do more damage. So let's Traverse. For a... For a Death Shadow. And we have like, we've got two more Battle Rages in the deck. They're all about to be moons, so who cares? Cancel. Play this. And now my opponent's likely dead if they take this turn off to Blood Moon, and they're likely dead if they don't Blood Moon. Because I just do more damage. I go to 7, 14. The Death Shadow's lethal on its own. Now they can Blood Raid Elf into something insane, but it's even going to be difficult for Blood Raid Elf to save them through this Battle Rage. It would be nice to be able to have that guy in play. So now they go to 6. No need to divulge the information. Okay, so now they're going to elf. And that probably just mathematically kills them. Unless they hit something just absolutely egregious off of this. Okay, so now they're dead. And a lot of people talk to me about, like, hey, you know, this Death Shadow deck, it's kind of got a fragile mana base. Like, you know, what does what is that, you know, how, how do you like to play this deck? And I'm like, if your opponent more than likely takes the third turn of the game off to Blood Moon you, they usually die. They don't usually die, but as long as you've set up a board presence, they're in a lot of trouble. And now my opponent doesn't have a block that keeps them alive. Because I just Battle Rage. Both of them are lethal with Battle Rage. Now, a disruptive deck, something like a Jace deck, is a little different because they can Blood Moon you, take a shot, and then go like bounce your card. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh shit, I can't cast it. So Jace is a little bit of an exception. Um, I could just cut. These like, Lilianas are going to be too slow on the draw, I think, especially when thinking about um, whatever they are. Um, when thinking about Blood Moon, I actually gotta bring these Surgicals in because they do two damage to me. And then I'm gonna cut a land and bring in Brutality because we don't have any three drops. The old Surgical to Nug myself is the plan, is I think going to be better than a Liliana the Veil in the drama. Liliana's stock has gone down a lot since Blood Red Elf was unbanned. In my opinion. The card's not nearly as mean as she used to be. She used to be one nasty lady. But now she's just like a lady that gets gets beat up on by an elf. Keep this hand. We play around Blood Moon. We get the Bobble Trick. We can get Delirium on one. We do have to use our Traverse to do that. So... We'll see if that's worth it or not. <clears throat> I have to make a new deck, a new video for top deck this week. I don't know exactly what I want to do. I kind of want to play some Hollow One. I kind of want to play Decandio's Pyromancer deck, and I kind of want to play Mardu Pyromancer. All the Pyromancer decks are like my favorite decks to play. Like those decks are sweet. I don't think they're particularly good, 
but they are they are very they're very fun to play. Make a lot of sweet game decisions. Philly's waking up. He's likely gonna have to go to the bathroom pretty soon. I I agree that they are shit. They're steel shaft, but they are fun to play. So that's actually not terrible. So let's bobble ourselves. This hand's pretty insulated against Blood Moon. It's actually going to struggle a little bit against a whatever it is. A uh, just like a, a quick stone one. Again, I won't be streaming this weekend as it's Easter and my little bruh is going to be up. So now do we risk it? And I think we do. I think we draw this, inquisition our opponent, and then let's just see if we can take a payoff. Because if I go inquisition into Tarmogoyf, it's a little risky. Because this beats Blood Moon. It doesn't beat Stone Rain. Maybe it's just better to traverse for a basic. Man, that sounds so mopey. Like, it's so mopey to do that that I don't know if I'm going to win if I do that. All right, we're getting the scavenging out of here. Then we're going to play a big old Garmatoif next turn. Like, I love sitting there thinking about, like, oh, man, how am I going to, like, set up my Bedlam Reveler so that I get rid of all my cards? You know, like, that is so much fun to do. Okay. So we're very set up to get underneath Blood Moon with our Tarmogoyfs, and then if this game goes longer and they don't find an answer, then we should be able to... Um, so there's the Wooded Foothills. They're probably going to sprawl this, and then hopefully don't Stone Rain me or Blood Moon me. It's gonna be, we're going to have like some hellacious shit coming at us next turn. Oh, it's another Utopia Sprawl. That's fine. So... Something that I think that should not come in against these decks, I think these Obstinate Balos are nonsense against Death Shadow decks. Unless you are racing to a combo, and even if you are racing to a combo, then they might still just be... Oh, shoot. I clicked on the wrong land. Well, let's hope we don't get punished for that. They still might... Because they're such small ball when it comes to like Death Shadows and Team or Battle Rages that I think that you're better off... I mean, it, also, it obviously like always depends on what you're cutting. But... You're, I think that most of the time you're just better off leaving a card like this in your sideboard and being much more linear. Because like, what is it going to do against this Tarmoid? It's not really going to do very much. Also, like the fact that what another thing that really frustrates me about those moderate Pyromancer decks is that you can't just go like Thoughtseize Tarmogoyf. Now, if we get Blood Moon here, okay. You can't just go Thoughtseize Tarmogoyf, which is like so good against a majority of, uh, of the format. Okay. So do I just want to like start finding Death Shadows? Like, do I just say like screw Blood Moon and we just start going like larger than our opponent? And I think I'm going to do that. So let's go in and attack first. No, I sh no, that's okay. I'm going to attack. Traverse for a Death Shadow, Traverse for another Death Shadow, cast the Death Shadow. So now at least, even if my opponent gets me here, then I'm still like underneath. I'm still gonna be larger than or at least if I get if I get Blood Mooned, then I can at least get my shadows into play. And it's gonna be difficult for them to attack me. What's up, Phil? You need to go out, don't you? You need to go out. Yeah, we'll go out after this league, bud. Dog gets some homies. 
I don't get your reference there, sir. But this this is my homie right here, the old Philberg. Yeah, that's that's my opinion. So now we just go get stomping ground, double traverse, play one. Then next turn we like fetch shock, play another, play Grim Flare. I'm not super keen on playing Grim Flare right now. Actually. So what's if I'm if my plan is to nah, fuck it. Well, is the flare just a better play? Because that means my Tarmogoy is going to grow one more point. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go Traverse for a Death Shadow, play a Grim Flare. It hits like a little less hard, but... Nah, that's just crazy. Yeah, that's just crazy, I think. Though I can play the Flare before... I mean, I should have thought about this a little bit longer beforehand. I could have played the Flare under a Blood Moon. Or I can play the Shadows under Blood Moon. I can't play the Flare under Blood Moon. So I actually do think it was correct to Traverse for a Death Shadow and play Grim Flare. And then next turn, Traverse for another Death Shadow, fetch again, play all three, play two Death Shadows and still have one more mana up to do something with. I think that in hindsight, that was what I should have done. But now I can play a Death Shadow and attack. Mom and Pop. Okay, so this game's going to get harder. I'm probably just going to kill this Mom and Pop, to be honest. Like, like I don't want them flinging artifacts at my stuff. So I could easily just go attack with both of these. Terminate Mom. Fetch... And Overgrown Tomb, play Grim Flare to trample over all this little crap. Jeez, what does this mean? Bing. Block this, take two next turn, they gain life. Okay, so yeah, we're going to go Fetch Shock. And then I'm going to terminate this before damage to grow my toy, to grow my Tarn Wife by one point. Get another red source. Get this fancy lady out of here. So we crack for 10. And now all of my creatures are lethal next turn. So they have to block everything. So there's no point in playing another Death Shadow because Grim Flare is going to get chumped by something. And then, well, they're going to gain the Obstinate Bailoth, so that's kind of fake news, because now the Bailoth just trades with this Flare. Yep, see, that was another mistake. We're all over the place today. Okay, so there's the Bailoth. Bailoth. And an Arbor Elf. Okay, so if these two are coming in, okay, they're not. Battle Rage, Tilt. So if I attack with everything, my opponent likely goes block, block, block. They have to block the Death Shadow, so it's assuming the Death Shadow gets blocked by the Arbor Elf. These two trade, this gets chomped. So then my opponent's board... Looks like, yeah, whatever, we're just attacking. Because they're forced to block at least this and then one of the two of these. And if they don't block this, then me getting in a trigger is going to be pretty good. So I'd assume they trade here. Then that goes there, and then probably this Arbor Elf comes here. Okay, no, they're keeping the Arbor Elf. So what do they need the mana for? Yes, you you speak the truth. I could have played. I should have played Grim Flare. This this Grim Flare just completely backfired on me. Okay, 
So now we go back to the same place next turn where they have to, where they're again abyssed. And it's probably going to go like this for a little while. This deck's decent at creating chump blockers. Okay. The next turn, they have to block these two. They don't have to block Tarmogoyf. But then that, then all of a sudden they're in the abyss again. Tyler's tracker. Tyler's tracker, you know, plays because if they have like a fetch land here, if they've got a fetch land, then all of a sudden they can draw a million cards. Double tracker. Okay, so likely this blocks, this blocks here, this doesn't necessarily block here. So now we've got to do some different stuff. Because if my opponent draws a clue, then what I need to do, I need to find a removal spell. Because my opponent can block our two of our death shadows with these two. And then if I block here, I'm still in good shape. So yeah, we're just attacking with these. This Tarmogoyf is reserved to block either one of these tireless trackers next turn. At least that's what I'm feeling. We're not cracking this fetch lane. Battle Rage, tilt. Yeah, so we're just coming in with both our shadows. And they probably go block, block here. Because even if my opponent draws a fetch land, they don't kill me, I don't think, because of how these trackers work. And then our death shadows are still going to be larger than the tireless trackers, so they still have to chump away. I hope they draw like an Arbor Elf. All right, that could be worse. It's still pretty bad. It's actually pretty bad. Like now we're looking for really need. All right, at least they don't double up on clues, which is nice. Really need a team or battle. I think I would have liked to see them tap their forest to do that. Because more than likely they're cracking both of them. Because see, now this is like awkward. All right, can we get a non-land card off the top of our library? The nice thing is that we are double abyssing them. Like, but if they keep drawing two cards a turn, and it could be four cards a turn because of how much mana they have, like, we are going to lose this game if this game goes long. We've got three Battle Rages in the deck. We're 20 cards down. That's a third of our library. We're due. All right? We're, we're freaking due. It's about time my library gives me a Battle Rage. Okay, nothing. What does this mean? This means they've got to have enough chump blockers. If they had a lightning bolt, they would have attacked with this. Unless they drew two. Unless they drew bolt bolt. No, they they could have just drawn lightning bolt. Oh, that's this is this is. Don't do it to me. Don't do it to me. That was unfortunate. Let's see what we would have drawn next turn. No, Potsy's wouldn't have done anything. That is unfortunate. All right, let's run back to the deck here. So I think I ran a little bit cold. Bolt you redirect to a Johnny. So no, we can no longer do that. So if we're going to jump back onto this deck for a second. I think... 
I like this deck. I think these are nonsense, and I think these could easily be something else to help us in combo matchups. I don't know if I want to play blue as well, because that restricts a sideboard slot. Not exactly sure. You can until Dominaria, yes. Yep. Yes, you can. <clears throat> um, let me think. I don't know. I think I think I kind of ran ran a little ran a little low, ran a little cold, I guess, in that uh, in that second league. I think I don't think I I don't think I I uh, play. I don't think I drew as best as I could. And then the what that guy brought up. There's arguments to playing a different way. Um, like we could have done something different. Autumn Lily MTG. Oh shoot. Oh shoot. I don't know. I don't know. Let me get back in here to my chat here. Let me see how many people we had followed during the stream. Well, it's kind of a little bit of slow traffic today. That happens. I usually don't stream now. I usually get more. I usually get most of my traffic on Sunday mornings. Sunday morning streams tend to be pretty lit. I'm usually on it a little more. Usually on it a little more, playing better, but. I think what we're going to do is we're going to send you over to Autumn. A-U-T-U-M. A-U-T-U-M-M-L-I. Um, Autumn is a part of, of the Card Hoarder Network. So I hope you guys had a great time. Great time on the stream today. And I hope you all have a good rest of your day. And check out Autumn's stream.